In a previous video, I discussed log returns, and I want to continue that discussion by looking at a few properties of returns. Now, the natural log of 1 plus the return is going to be equal to the natural log of the future value over the present value. Remember, future value over present value minus 1 equals return. So if we add 1 to both sides, then we just have uh, that minus 1 cancels out, and we get future value over present value. Well, it turns out that we can also break this up. This is a rule of logarithms that the log of something divided by something else is going to be the difference between the two. So the log, the natural log of future value over present value equals the natural log of the future value minus the natural log of the present value. So for example, suppose the future value is 120 and the present value is 100. If we uh, take the natural log of 120 over 100 or the natural log of 1.2, we get 0 0.1823. If we take the natural log of 120, right, the, um, the numerator, and then we subtract the natural log of 100, which is the denominator, we get 4.7975 minus 4.6052, and we get the same answer, uh, 0 0.1823. Now, some other properties. These things get added together. Okay? That was one of the problems with doing the arithmetic um, returns because you start multiplying things together and if you're assuming some sort of normal distribution it turns out that multiplying them together uh, does not make them normal anymore but adding them together does and if you want the um, expected return logarithmic return you can just take you can just sum up 1 plus the natural log of all the returns and then divide by n. So let's take a look at an example here. Uh, suppose the interest rate is 10%. Well, the arithmetic future value is going to be 110, 121, 133, uh, and 10 cents for years 1, 2, and 3. And you can calculate that by the standard future value formula here, 100 times 1.10 uh, raised to the nth power. Right? You can see that if you multiply it by 100 times 1.1, so it's the first power, that'll be 110. And if you raise it to the second power, 121, and then third power is 133.10. Okay, well, what's the log return for the first year, okay, from 110 uh, to 100? It's 0.0953. So you would expect that the returns, I mean, the way we work this out, should be the same year after year after year. So let's let's try it the two different ways using the two different formulas. Here's a long-handed formula and what we need to do is we need to take uh, the average of the natural log of the first future value over the present value plus the natural log of the second future value over the first future value, right? So this is one period's return, this is the second pe period's return, this is the third period's return, or one plus uh, the return. So we would have uh, one third times the natural log of 110 over 100. We already worked that out, 0 0.0953. Then the natural log of 121 over 110, that's also 0 0.0953. And then 133.10 over 121. So you can see this is going to average out to 0 0.0953. Okay. Or, you could have simply jumped to the final period, 133.10, divided it by the present value, and then um, taken the natural log of that, and then divided by uh, 3. So you'll get the natural log of this is 0 0.2859, divided by 3, you get 0 0.953. So one of the nice things about logarithms is it takes some of these multiplication problems and makes them addition or subtraction problems. And it's also quite nice because we can easily calculate the return here without having to calculate 
the future value for year two, three, four, calculate the return for each period, and then multiply them, you know, one plus the return together, and then take the, you know, nth root. So all we need here is the final future value divided by the present value, and all we need to know is the number of periods. So this is a, a very nice property, and it makes it quite easy to calculate the rates of return.